Hi everyone, thanks for joining. My name is Jasmine. I'm a registered provisional psychologist and I like to create YouTube videos on social commentary or to psychoanalyze celebrities or notable figures within society using psychological concepts so they're easy to understand and easy to apply to your own life that can change your life for the better. So if you want to be entertained as well as find out interesting psychological tips and tricks that you can use in your own everyday life to apply it, then please hit subscribe. I also offer online support. So it's convenient, it's anonymous and it's affordable. Link is in the bio. Check out my IG at Helping Minds Online for daily tips on a better you. Now, let's get to it. Today, we are going to talk about the recent Astro World music concert calamity involving Travis Scott and the unfortunate deaths of nine attendees so far with victims aged between 14 and 27 years of age following the Travis Scott's Astro World Festival, which occurred on November 5, 2021. So there are about 80 civil lawsuits against Scott, the organizers and even Drake. There's going to be an operational view of looking at who is to blame. Was it inadequate security? Was it a poorly designed stadium? Was it the organizers? Some people even question if it is the crowd themselves to blame. Personally, I do not. Um, I don't believe this is the case at all. But as for operationally, who is to blame? We will leave that argument up to the courts to battle out in the ensuing court cases. What I'm going to do today is psychoanalyze the celebrity and offer a scientific psychological viewpoint as I do on this channel um, for my other videos. So please subscribe if this is interesting to you. It's, rel it's a relatively new account, so I really appreciate the support. In the instance of crowd surges, I will talk about the responsibility of the artists themselves. So in this case, I'm going to psychoanalyze Travis Scott's accountability from a speculative point of view based on information that is readily available to the public at the time of this recording, coupled with the knowledge I have acquired while studying and working as a provisional psychologist. So let's first break down the terrifying concept that is crowd surge. It's a risk at any mass gathering and an essential feature is a tightly packed crowd. In this environment, the risks of falls increases and those at the front must keep moving as quickly as they can and as fast as the people that will be coming up behind them or they risk being pushed over. Once you get to say six or seven people per square meter, the crowd of people almost becomes like a mass of fluid and it becomes potentially lethal. There is sufficient force in this mass of bodies to actually lift people off their feet, even out of their shoes, clothes can be torn off, and the force of the mass can throw people up to three meters away or more. So you couple that force and pressure with anxiety, extreme, extreme anxiety, even heat, and it is really difficult to breathe. The force of the crowd crush is actually enough to bend steel. So what usually happens though, is you run out of oxygen as you become trapped in this mass of bodies. You can faint, but you're standing. So you literally cannot fall to the ground, which is a mechanism necessary to allow blood to flow to the brain again. TikTok users said there were sinkholes of bodies and that occurs because as one person faints or collapses, people from further back 
start to trample over or fall in on top of them as they're also pushed by the momentum of the crowd and then person after person just falls and people at the bottom are obviously crushed. The other spot people get crushed is at the front, um, at the barrier, as more and more people press up against it and you can get crushed to death here. Any other information on the characteristics of crowd surges or perhaps personal experiences in crowd surges where you've been hurt or you've seen someone get hurt, then please, if you are up to it, please share your experience here. It's just important to share with other viewers through easily commenting below if you are ready to talk about it. So in Australia, something similar happened about 20 years ago at a huge event that we call the Big Day Out, where a young girl was killed um, due to crowd surge whilst Limp Biscuit was playing. A coroner concluded that this 16 year old girl had been crushed to death and when organisers saw she was in trouble they did signal to Limp Bizkit to stop playing and Limp Bizkit did stop playing. But following that tragic loss of life Australian promoters have been on to safety at festivals. A coronial inquest found organisers had not actually done enough to prevent a dangerous crush from breaking out. So several recommendations for improving safety at music festivals has now been implemented in Australia. We use D barriers, which help to separate the mosh from the rest of the crowd, and it lowers the chance of a crush. Now, interestingly, Pearl Jam were actually supposed to play at the big day out, but they pulled out because just prior to that, nine of their fans were killed in a crowd crush at an event in Denmark. So unfortunately, what's happened at Astrofest is not an isolated incident, but you can see how at the big day out, organizers signaled to Limp Bizkit to stop playing and they did. Why this did not occur at Astrofest is a mystery. People were chanting and pleading to stop the show and obviously the lawsuit is trying to find evidence that, amongst other things, what they'll also be trying to find evidence for is that Travis Scott was asked to stop but chose not to. So what are your thoughts when you see that video? Share them with me. I would love to hear. So there are two, two arguments against Travis Scott. One, that he incited violence and two, that he was asked to stop but chose not to and to a lesser argument and to a lesser degree is that he saw people in trouble and chose to continue the show. So I'll come back to the, the first argument of inciting violence, but as for he was asked to stop but chose not to, we will probably be privy to more information surrounding that in time and throughout the investigations. It may have been a systemic breakdown and possibly due to being severely understaffed. Currently, his legal team have put out a statement that Scott could not see due to lights in his eyes and he could not hear due to sound equipment. That's the, the latest and I definitely encourage you to share any updates as we hear them. But to say Scott couldn't see, well, if that was the case, these days, phones capture pretty much everything. Like you're not getting away with anything these days. And it's gonna be really hard to justify that argument when you see a video like this.
So how could we explain from a psychological point of view what we just saw then? The psychological concepts that could, ap could apply in Scott's inability to take action center around probably three key themes, person's agency, accountability, and the ego. So the person's agency is the individualistic capacity of the self to power actions for purpose. An example of someone with little agency might be a woman in a repressed country deciding on her rights to have an abortion, for example. One might expect that she has little agency in her life and her capacity to, to power her own actions for purpose. Travis Scott, I believe, would have a high level of agency. He's from an individualistic country. He's quite acclaimed in the music industry and he is partner to the world's youngest self-made female billionaire, Kylie Jenner, a title by the way that has since been revoked. Um, and they have soon to be two children together. So his capacity for agency is quite high, but all these factors work together to suggest that he, he is sufficiently powerful enough to stop the show if he wanted to. The second psychological concept to discuss in Travis Scott's personality profile relevant to this specific incident is accountability or taking responsibility for your actions. It is also holding another human being responsible for their actions too. So it is about the action. This is not about the individual. It involves humility, personal growth, empathy and responsibility. It is not a comfortable feeling, especially when it is done on a public platform. So like if you think about it, when you publicly call somebody out who has done something objectively wrong, you are holding them to a higher standard. You need courage to do this. You need humiliation and emotional intelligence. Accountability seems to be missing at the AstroFest in general. So Scott should have held himself more accountable as well as the actions of others being the security, being the organizers. If he knew what was happening, well, he had a public platform and he could have been accountable for his own actions as well as the actions of others, like as well as the actions of the security, as well as the actions of the organizers by asking them to stop the show and help those who were literally dying. It was not just him though. In that clip we just watched, you can see the cameraman taking no agency and also no accountability within himself and in others as well. It can also be like it's vulnerable for the individual who is asking for accountability. So it is hard to hold others. It is hard to hold others and yourself responsible. It takes work, it takes courage, it takes humility, emotional intelligence, insightfulness and empathy. If you want to understand psychological concepts in an easy to digest way and then have the skills to better apply them in your own lives and the lives of those around you, then please do subscribe because I do love to break down complex psychological concepts so we can all benefit. So back to accountability of musicians on the stage. Here are two examples of empathetic stars who have done this successfully. First up, we have Niall from One Direction, and then we have Adele, and apparently there were 150,000 in attendance at that Adele concert compared to 50,000 at AstroFest, and she had no qualms in, in stopping the show for one person. That there's a good chance that this show is gonna get canceled at some stage. Your security is my responsibility, okay? There is a ton of room down the back of this room. Please. Everyone doesn't need to be like this. And we don't want anyone getting hurt or squashed. 
sorry, can we stop? I'm sorry. Sorry, there's someone not well and I'm a bit worried because there's fireworks in this one. I don't want to scare him. It's okay to carry on. Lastly, to explain Travis Scott's inaction, we have ego. We are all probably familiar with Sigmund Freud's concept of the ID, the ego, the super ego, but a more modern way to think of the ego is to think of it as your self-conscious system. It is the narrating portion of our mind of our consciousness reflecting one's thoughts, feelings and actions and inhibits or legitimizes them to oneself and then to others. So the ego has basic functions like agency, insight, compassion, and empathy. It is crucial to understanding how a person operates within this world. Now, Travis Scott's reaction to a fan who took his shoe could be explained in terms of ego. So let's watch that clip. Get that motherfucker, get him! You tried to take my shoe? You wanna be a thief? Fuck him up! 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 Get him out of here! Get him out of here! So you can hear it, you tried to take my shoe, my shoe, F him up, this was my, my, me, my shoe, I have been wronged. You're so into yourself, like you're so into your own needs, your fragile self-esteem, and if you had more empathy, more compassion, you could look at it as a fan who desperately wants a piece of their idol, that's all. They just want some memorabilia to hold on to forever um, and to cherish forever. But if you've got irregularities within your ego functioning, then you may view it as a personal attack and even worse, encourage others to avenge that wrong. You don't even consider like the repercussions of setting a crowd of people onto like one individual, how much that person could have been hurt because your ego has been damaged and that's all that matters. And you're so desperate to repair it through acts of vengeance even, it really doesn't matter. So, but these are all just plausible interpretations. I do not know if that was how, what Travis was thinking nor could I ever apply with certainty these theories to every individual in that situation because we are all different and there are so many variables in life. Now, the second argument is that Scott incites violence. As psychologists, we do look at past behavior. So if somebody came in due to um, a relationship breakdown because maybe they were being abused in that relationship, then what I will do is look to find further instances of replicated behavior because if it's happened previously, then one might think or suggest that there is a pattern. So the likelihood of subsequent abusive relationships increases and repeated behavior could indicate an instance of possible childhood abuse by the parents, so they're just repeating it now as an adult. So that gives us a framework of what we need to work on to ensure that there is no subsequent abusive relationship in the future. And we can start to unpack that trauma whilst also working on improving self-esteem, 
um, improving interpersonal relationships, your ability to form them and maintain them and also your self-worth. Don't forget as well, if you want online support, you can make an instant online booking with me just using the link below. Anyway, when psychoanalyzing this occurrence surrounding Travis Scott, we need to look at past behavior during his concerts. So it will give us an indication of, of what's happening. We've already seen him specifically inciting violence within the crowd with the shoe incident, like there's no question there. There were very specific instructions given to conduct physical violence, like telling people to do that. And this unfortunately is not the first time Travis Scott has been in trouble with authorities over dangerous activities at his shows. It's not the first time people have gotten hurt during one of Scott's shows. And he has a history of encouraging his fans to engage in dangerous behavior. There is footage where Scott flees a stage because he realizes police are at the venue. He is later arrested and he pled guilty to disorderly conduct for inciting a riot at the concert with the local police stated he was encouraging people to rush the stage. In that very same year, a man would be left paralyzed after falling from a balcony during a Travis Scott show with footage showing Scott was encouraging a different fan to jump. He was saying, they're going to catch you, they're going to catch you. Two years prior to that, he was arrested and charged over a similar incident. Police accusing him of urging fans to jump over security barricades. So it's highly irresponsible behavior, highly impulsive behavior, and with very little concern for the well being of others, of his fans. And it looks terrible. It looks terrible when you're trying to defend Scott's character with these upcoming lawsuits. If anyone watching has been to a Travis Scott concert, please share your story below, it would be invaluable. Plus, it's always important to hear as many sides of the story as you can before you form an opinion. And a little side note is Travis Scott's well-known frequent usage of cannabis. Now, recreational use is one thing, um, chronic usage is another. And it is possible because Kylie Jenner has stated, uh, Scott always smells like weed. That's just one example. You can Google the rest. So chronic usage can be associated with escapism. Scott may have difficulties with facing the realities of life, of facing real world consequences. He may just avoid it. So when he possibly saw a young man being carried out, of the mosh pit, he may have just tuned it out instead of acting and instead of doing something. So in summary, I will preface by stating I have never met nor treated Travis Scott. And if I did, I'm ethically bound not to share such information, including opinions with anyone else, unless under court of law. But based on readily available media tied in with my experience, and knowledge, what I see is that we have a pretty incriminating past history of inciting violence at shows, significant video evidence to show he was aware something was wrong. But do I personally believe that Scott would have continued performing knowing that nine people, well, it would have been eight, um, were actually dead? No, I don't. He may be troubled, there may be cannabis use disorder, possible impulse control problems specifically surrounding anger, uh, narcissistic tendencies, not narcissistic personality disorder, which is a very rare disorder. So perhaps the overuse of that term should maybe stop, just a suggestion. Um, it's not good for stigma and mental health, but actual psychopathy is highly unlikely which would be the possible mental illness diagnosis associated with doing such a heinous act. But there is 
such cancel culture surrounding Scott and that could rightfully stem from his history of having very little concern for the crowd and encouraging their rage and anger. If he just could have learnt his lesson from previous times, like when that man became paralysed at, at his concert or when he was arrested and charged on two separate occasions, then maybe this tragedy may not have occurred. If he had have just learned his lesson and stopped encouraging such reckless behavior, this is possibly a reason why we feel so much anguish and cancel culture surrounding him. And had he had more agency, more accountability, more empathy for the crowd, then I believe this could have been prevented. But his inaction and the inaction of others means that nine people have now died horrific deaths when they just wanted to have some fun at a music festival. So what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear. As always, thank you for joining in. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out my other videos. I've done one on Britney Spears, a psychological profile on Elon Musk and exploring Bob Dylan's sexual assault charges, if you can call them that. You'll have to watch the video to see. Thank you again for joining me.